My mother was fully responsible for my early music education. It wasn't easy to find a teacher in my town, Kunming, at that time, and it wasn't easy for me to get around with public transportation. So my mother quit her job as an actress and became a librarian, so she could be in town all the time.、Um, she always accompanied me for lessons. Without my mother, it would have been impossible for me to continue to learn this instrument. Zola was born and raised in Mongolia, where the Long Song is a deeply rooted folk tradition. Her childhood was spent among the wonders of the natural world. She credits her rural upbringing as a major factor in her development as a singer. Тэнд дуучин болсон өөхтөө хэрэг хэлэх нь гэвэл ерөөсөө л хөдөө тал намайг дуулдаг бол тогруу үрж мэдээ хэдэн шиг уу ярьж дууны манай айлга нь бүжиглдэг. Тэгээд тэр шуудыг бүжиглүүлэх гэж би маш их хичээсэн маш одоо өдрөөс өдр сайн дуулахыг хичээж өөрөө өөртөө нэгэн ясны одоо байгалаас хийсэн авьяас юм аа тэр хөдөө тал тэр хөдөөгийн төр сайхан шууд далж өгөрн бэ миний авьяас юм тээж ирсэн болов гэж байна тий. Тэгээд тэр шуудыг бүжиглүүлэх гэж тэр өдрийн уртыг тоглох гэж би өөрөө өөртөө дуучин байсан хөдөө тал. А тэгээд миний авьяас юм мэдрсэн хүмүүс намайг мэрэгжлийн байгууллага таарчих шалгуулаад ингээд би мэрэгжлийн дуучин болох гараага авчихсан юм. While herding sheep, she would sing to stave off loneliness. Zola's ability was quickly recognized. She was sent to study long song at the Han Henti Music Institute. This was followed by a further period of study at the University of Arts in the capital Ulaanbaatar. One of the reasons why I came to Montreal was. Because、uh, I needed to study with someone, and when I was taking lessons、uh, from Rostropovich in Rome, my parents asked him, "Where do you think Yegor should go and,、uh, and study?" And、uh, one of the options was to go to study with、uh, Yuli Turovsky here in Montreal. And、um, Rostropovich thought for a couple of minutes, said, "Why, why doesn't he go there? I think he could learn a lot from from Yuli." And,、uh, basically, he sort of sealed my my fate for the next few years. I knew Igor's、uh, parents from Moscow. We studied in Moscow Conservatory. Well, when I immigrated and established myself in in Montreal, I formed the Borodin Trio, and there was a concert、uh, tour in in Italy. And all of a sudden,、uh, Djechkov's family appeared with Igor. He was twelve or thirteen years、uh, old, and I swear his mother. Introduced him to me, said that well he is also cellist, and they are thinking to go to Montreal, and whether I would would teach him. And I thought well okay, so come come to Montreal and I I will, I will teach you. So they did. A few months later, he started to to work with me. He did enormous progress, very very fast. You know he had this you know kind of radars you know which absorbed every, everything what you say. And in two years he already played the repertoire like like Dvorak concert and、uh, well the the top things of the, of the cello repertoire. And at that time. Uh, my orchestra in Musici di Montreal had a position for for cellist, and I thought, well, why not Igor?、Uh, I think he joined in Musici di Montreal when he was 15 years old. That's the record, you know. We, we had some 16 years old at the beginning, but now we're 15.、Uh, well, for me, important thing was that he not only learns what what I can teach him, but he starts to understand himself. And、uh, to develop his his own、uh, style. I think Yuli really helped me to develop as a musical persona. I think, and、uh, to become a, a musical individual. And 
to be brave about putting forth my own ideas as well. I was very lucky to be at the Shanghai Conservatory of Music. It opened up many doors. I learned to play the Gu Zhen, an instrument which has over 2,000 years of history. I also learned a lot about the Western classical music. All that helped me to become a musician that I am today. J'ai eu l'occasion de la voir en concert. Euh, J'ai eu l'occasion aussi, le plaisir de l'enregistrer dans toutes sortes de situations. Et euh, c'est une artiste euh, que je considère exceptionnelle, euh, même parmi tous les artistes que j'ai rencontrés, que j'ai pu enregistrer de, dans le monde de la musique classique ou de la musique traditionnelle. J'ai rarement vu une personne être aussi concentrée, être aussi absorbée quand elle joue de son instrument, surtout du pipa. Elle est là sur scène, elle ferme ses yeux, elle entre vraiment à l'intérieur. À l'intérieur d'elle, la musique sort de ses doigts, de ses, de ses départs, de sa tête. C'est quelqu'un aussi qui est capable de s'ouvrir aux autres. Et j'ai eu l'occasion de l'enregistrer aussi dans toutes sortes de situations. On peut lui demander d'être, de l'associer avec des musiciens du Liban, avec des musiciens d'Iran, avec des musiciens d'ici, en musique contemporaine, classique, en musique traditionnelle, en musique populaire. Et à chaque fois, elle est toujours très adaptable et très ouverte. Alors, ce sont deux qualités qui sont réunies chez elle et qui en fait, je pense, une artiste exceptionnelle. Et puis, elle nous a... Euh, sa contribution ici au Québec est, est assez extraordinaire parce qu'elle nous a fait apprécier euh, la musique classique de son pays, la musique classique chinoise. Et euh, moi, qui connais bien la musique classique occidentale, avec des compositeurs comme Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, euh, Schubert, euh, j'ai trouvé tout de suite, parce que c'est une grande interprète, que la musique qu'elle jouait était du même niveau et que c'était une musique qui avait beaucoup de profondeur, beaucoup de richesse. C'est une musique qui est aussi, qui se situe hors du temps et hors de l'espace. Tout comme la musique de Mozart, je suis sûre, est capable de, de toucher le cœur des Chinois, je pense que sa musique, elle, est capable de toucher le cœur euh, des Québécois. Alors, je, je pense que Liu Fang a contribué vraiment, à, et est une contribution exceptionnelle à la culture québécoise. I love all kinds of music. Mm. I 
have performed with well-known orchestras, ensembles, and string quartets, and worked with renowned composers in Canada and Europe. That was a wonderful experience. I also enjoyed working with some of the great traditional musicians from around the world. At the age of 24, Zola won first prize in the Ulan Batar competition of professional long song singers. And six years later, she was honored as the top contributor in Mongolian national culture. Her phenomenal talent was noticed by Yo Yo Ma, who in 2003 invited her to join his Silk Road Ensemble. The long song evokes uh, distance, vast distances, the land, the name. Uh, the origins of Long Song was actually uh, for a specific purpose, for long distance communication. There remains, I think, something that is unique to Mongolia, to its history, and one of the things that's unique is the Long Song, one of the closest uh, representations of the Mongolian soul. So Mongolia is looking for uh, traditions from the past so that they can reconnect to a very ancient history. I think it's really important that people like Zola keep on this form of